Hello, my name is Alan Thiel with Midwest Machinery Company. Today we'll do a short video on a post-season inspection of a 740 flex draper and a walk around of some of the things you should look at after you just got done with it for the year while it's fresh in your mind before you, before you put it away. We'll start out with a few safety things, a couple of safety things. As you can see, I've got the feeder house stopped down there, so the, if we want to crawl underneath this, we can, we're safe there. Uh, a couple other things you want to look at is make sure your reflectors are good, make sure your lights are working. I'm sure you probably remember that from when you were running this year, if, if your safety lights or your warning lights were working on the machine. Always consider the safety when you start working on these. Um, we'll move over to doing some of the oil checks on this. There are quite a few different gearboxes on a flex draper. There is a center drive gearbox. That one's a little bit hard to see in here, but there is a, there's a check plug on that center, center drive gearbox. I'm gonna recommend that we always use the operator's manual. It'll show you which plug to check, which one's the drain, which one is the fill, which one is the, is the actual oil level. We also have the same thing on the main gear case. There's actually a drain plug over on this side. This one here is the check plug. Up here is a breather with the fill plug. So your, your oil level in here would be to pull this plug out, add your oil up here. All these oil levels on this machine are with, the, with it in the operating position, so it would be with it down on the ground. So we wouldn't check it at this point, but we would let it down. A couple other things as far as maintenance over in here, these dry, all these drive shafts have grease circs in them. As far as your telescoping drive shafts, make sure you get the holes lined up, find the grease circ on the shaft, give them some grease. Um, Obviously, and check all, check all your hoses and, and your motors, everything for any oil leaks. This, another gearbox over here that drives your, your, main, your main feed belts. This plug right here is the oil level on this one. Again, it's with the head down in the operating position. Um, we got operating lights, we got sensors, we got wiring, all that kind of stuff should be inspected on here. Um, draper tension. This here shows the draper tension on here. It should be in the green and the operating. We're gonna recommend that you loosen that tension up when it sits over winter so we don't have tension sitting on the belts of the rollers. Underneath, we also have the hoses for the Hydroflex part of this. We have a hoses underneath here. We have cylinders that we should take a look at. Make sure everything's in good condition under there after the year. Moving around to the end, we have another gearbox up here on both ends of this 40 footer because of the dual knife drive. That one actually has a dipstick in the top. I'll let it down here in a little bit and we'll show that one again. Um, this drive shaft also has a grease circ here. Same on the other end of the head. One of the things that probably gets overlooked uh, quite a bit on, on cutting platforms is the knife drive alignment. If you can, I don't know if we can zoom in on this one quite well enough with the camera or not, but if we look here, this cutter bar is pressing really hard down on the guards. What should happen here is we should loosen this up. This should actually be raised up a little bit here so that we get just light pressure down on here. This one's pretty tight. So we do have some adjustment there, and we also do have some adjustment in these bolts just a little bit forward and back to center our cutter bar in our guards correctly. So that's another adjustment we should look at. Now that we lowered the head down a little ways, we can get at a few more things and see it a little bit easier. I realize I missed, missed telling you what just adjustment is to loosen up the, the belts on the side. This bolt right here will loosen up a spring that puts the spring tension on both the drive belts or both the feed belts on this side of the head. Um, so there's one of these on each side. That's the one, that's for your tension. Moving around to the front of the head, um, this particular head has a flip over reel on it. So there's a couple more moving parts out in here. So we want to check the reel pretty close. We want to check the, the idler bearings that are up in here that the reel rides on. We want to check our plastic bushings in the reel to make sure they're not getting more too bad. We do have grease circ <coughs> out here on the end. That is a 50 hour grease circ. Um, the rest of it is plastic slide, so there's really not much maintenance there. Um, cutter bar and hold downs. The hold down specification on this head is 10, is 10 thousandths of an inch clearance between the, the hold down and the cutter bar. 
except for over here in the center. Excuse me, 20 thousandths of an inch, excuse me. It's 20 thousandths there. And over here where you have a double knife drive, we get in there, it's a 40 thousandth. 40 thousandths of an inch clearance is the recommended clearance. Another thing to look at really close on draper heads is make sure we're not getting material built up in here. If we see any, any bumps up underneath here, we're probably getting a little bit of trash built up in there. Personally, if it was my head, I would probably take the, take the belts loose and actually take them apart and make sure everything is cleaned out good under there before we start the year. <clears throat> Again, in the center, we have a grease circ up on the reel. Um, we have a center drive section, or center feed belt. There's also a tension on that belt. It, we'd have to have the head back up underneath and crawl underneath. What I can tell you there is, the best thing is to look at your book in there. There's an, adjust, there's an adjustment in there, and there's a, the head of the bolt should be flush with the, with the side of the plate that it goes through. So it's a pretty easy adjustment, but it, it's best if you look at your operator's manual to make sure you're on the right adjustment there. Um, the plastics, the plastic slides in here, the, the transition from the cutter bar to the belt. Um, it's possible you could see some damage there from rocks or some cracks or things like that. So you probably wanna look at them a little bit. Obviously the sickle sections and the guards are another issue to uh, keep an eye on, but everybody, Kind of knows that one. Over here, we're back to the same same drive shaft on this side that was on the other end. The same gearbox. And if you can if you can get a picture up in here, the dipstick is right in the top of this gearbox. If you can hit that one right up, maybe you want to look from the side here. But right there is a picture of the dipstick there. So make sure you get that one there again. That that one is the oil level with the machine on the ground. Hoses, belts, wiring, um, linkages for your header height sensing, and contour master. Again, we have the light. The rest of the drive over here, here's, the, here's your same belt adjustment. Um, the same gearbox over here. More sensors. Uh, we also have our controller over here. Make sure we don't have any problems with any of our wiring. Um, the other thing is make sure this is all cleaned off pretty good so that we don't have rodent issues or anything like that. Um, I think that pretty much covers a, a real quick walk around of this machine. And there again, I would really recommend going through the operator's manual when you're doing these. And keep, well, do, it, do it now while it's still fresh in your mind after the season's over. Thank you.